What's up, y'all? This is My Why Season 5, and I believe this is Episode 7. And the link, when it's available, okay, will no longer say review at the top. And it will be down below in the description box. So, y'all, like this video, okay? 1K subscriber gift giveaway. You must like, share, and subscribe. I know y'all tired of hearing me say that, but... Shit, go ahead and share and like the video, and then we can get this over, this 1K subscriber thing over. Anyways, y'all, let's get into it. Okay, so it's after the fight. Karen is trying to get to Natalie. Natalie is like, if she tries to, if she tries to get, don't get her. Don't grab her. It's okay, Natalie, so you want to fight, huh? This hoe ends up jumping the car anyways. They weren't going to let Karen get to her. Afterwards, Drew just like, you know what? I'm so fucking tired of being in the middle. Nothing got soft. You know what? Next time, if I'm in the middle of shit, somebody's head's going to get cracked. Who heads you going to crack? You're going to crack Natalie's. So, basically, I guess what Drew is saying is she's tired of Hearing all this bullshit, now they keep talking about people's family, and it's foul. It's fucked up. You don't stand for it. Good for you, then. Afterwards, Karen meets up with the other Natalie. Okay, what's her name? Natalie D. And, you know, she lets Natalie know what, what went on with her and the other Natalie and how they started fighting. And, uh, you know, she wants some more of her. And then Natalie did is like, look, I'm going to let you know what she said, okay? She didn't call my man again. I don't know why. Natalie G, okay, Radley, that's what we're going to call herself. I don't know I don't know why Radley keeps calling her man. She was like, she called my man, and this time I was on the phone with, you know, I was there while he was on the phone. So he put it on speaker. And she said, I don't know why Natalie D wants to be friends with um, Drita, Anch, uh, Renee, and Karen because there ain't nothing but a bunch of Stat Island Sea Hacks. Okay. <sighs> My thing, I don't know if Natalie said this, Radley said this or not, but if, like, Renee says Natalie is on drugs. Okay, she could have she could have said it and just been high out her mind. She could have said it. I don't trust this broad at all. Okay, so she definitely could have said it. Okay, so afterwards, Natalie ends up um Natalie D. She's in a boxing, she's boxing or whatever. And Drita comes and visit her. And <clears throat> Natalie also tells her, look. Okay, I heard word from word. This is what she said. She called my man again, and this is how it happened because I guess she heard that I had been going to uh something that Drita shit, some shit that Drita had. And she was like, I don't know why she wants to hang around those sea, what is it, Stat Island Sea Hacks. Now, this, I mean, Drita's like, that's not cool. That's not fucking cool. That's not cool at all. No, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to have it. <laughs> so, um, you know, Drita ends up, first of all, let me get, go um, back. Y'all, Renee gets a letter from Junior. Actually, it's from Junior to AJ. And he's basically telling AJ all the shit that he did, why he didn't. He didn't tell because he felt he felt something on his heart. He just felt like it was wrong. And it was so dirty. <clears throat> Renee's not happy about that shit at all. She's like, why would you tell your son that? I would rather I would rather for you to be dead than be a rat. Okay? Why would you even try to tell your son that? Uh Junior is full of shit. He is because from what Renee says, you've been snitching since 06, but you were still doing crime in, in 2010. Like, what the fuck? How, did, how does that even work out? That's what I want to know. How it work out? Okay, so 
That's some fucked up shit. She ends up dealing with um AJ later on because Karen ends up telling her, of course, she knows somebody in jail. And AJ, I mean not AJ, Junior got eleven years. And Renee's like, oh, that is like relief. That is a relief to me because, you know, I don't even feel bad for AJ because it's like he's a fucking monster. You know, it's a monster getting out of our lives for 11 years, okay? We can just have peace. And Renee's friend Tiffany is like, look, okay, you said that, but I don't see AJ looking at his father like a monster. That's his father. And you might not see that. But that is what it is to him. Okay, so Renee ends up going to talk to AJ because he already heard the news and he ain't been talking lately. And she's like, so how do you feel? You know, I really, I feel bad that, you know, I mean, it's a good thing that he's going away for 11 years because, you know, this is the crime. He has to pay due to time for the crime that he did and it's, also, he's doing time for, you know, the people that lost their parents, all right, because of what he did. And a AJ is like, yeah, yeah, I know. And she was like, uh, I know he's going to be out your life for 11 years, but, and AJ was like, wait a minute. My father's been out my life for half of my life, okay? He's been in jail for half of my life, for the past few years, he's been gone. I have not seen him. It's like he's not even real. And Renee starts crying. And this is when I, I'm like, okay, Renee, you the one that chose this fuck up. Okay, there's consequences to that. But when she starts talking about how she never had to deal with that because her father had, you know, her father was always there. He never left her alone. Um, he would take her to Rockefeller every Christmas, okay? And that's when I realized she thought that she was marrying somebody like her father. Yeah, they did fucked up things, but he was still a good father. And she thought she was getting that, and she wasn't, okay? So I almost teared up when that happened. I feel bad for AJ, and I feel bad for Renee. That was... He didn't deserve that, okay? We don't choose our parents. He didn't deserve to have to go through anything like that. So, at least AJ is well taken care of, but I don't know. Hopefully, one day he can forgive his father. Um, As for Karen, y'all, Karen ends up going with Storm, okay? And they talking and walking. She about to go to Arizona because her brother, Gerard, is about to open up a restaurant and she wants to open up a medical marijuana dispensary <laughs> and you know he supports on this and whatever but i'm like really karen she's trying to come up with names for you know what i really got to do is come up with a strain for it you know what about gravano green and he was like negative because all weed ain't green some of it's purple and she goes to Arizona, her brother's restaurant or whatever. Her and her, all her family, they all real close. They start talking about how her daughter is all into selfies even before she go to school. And Karen's like, you know what? At least she's nothing like me and Gerard. And she was like, yeah. Her mom was like, yeah, you know what? She ain't like me. You know, I remember um, y'all would sneak out the house and, and – uh, we heard something on the roof, and Sammy went and got the gun, and I was kind of half asleep. Then it hit me. Those are the kids. And she said she had to run upstairs and tell Sammy, no, no, don't shoot, don't shoot. Those are the kids. Those are the kids. And they was like, yeah, you almost lost your life. So then Karen goes into how she wants to open up a medical marijuana dispensary, and her mom is like, are you serious? Do you think the state of Arizona is going to let you do that with that name Gravano? Karen, 14 years ago, back in 2000, I guess, Karen and her brother was running drugs and her baby daddy. Okay, they was all doing 
you know, drug ring, whatever the hell they was doing. And her father ended up taking the rap for them and ended up going to jail for it. Karen, I'm kind of with your mama on this. Why would you do that? Your daddy had to go to jail for y'all. Are you serious? Why would you do that? This is not a good idea. Your mother's like, did the Arizona sun, you know, fire your freaking brain? And she talks, you know, she looks at Gerard and she's like, did you know she was thinking about this? He was like, yeah, I know she's thinking about it. He's like, you go ahead, Karen, okay? I'll bail you out. <laughs> Karen, I don't know. I know you want to do this the right way completely. I don't know. You, This is something you should talk to your father on. I'm sorry. He just took the rap for your ass. I know. Shit. I know you done had to, you know... Go through a lot with him being Gravano and Sammy, you know, Sammy the Bull. But for him to go to jail for years and years and years for your shit? Child, please. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to get to Drita's having her calendar launch. Okay, she don't know if Rattley is coming. Because, you know, before that big fight and all that shit happened... She had invited Riley. So it was Natalie D and um Renee and Big Angie's there. And Renee is talking about how, you know, Natalie's this, Natalie's that, of course, like she always say. And she's like fucking Riley. And and Big Angie's like, I don't want to hear about it. You know, I'm just I'm just so sick of that. You know, she is not a bad person. And Fucking Renee is like, are you stoned? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So after that, after they talk about it, Renee gets a text. And it's Nally talking about how you told me to ring your bell. And I'm ringing your bell. So, you know, I don't know. It's your choice and my treat. The fuck? Renee Sinella, oh, this bitch is crazy. She shows Drita. Drita's like, oh, yeah, so she's loony soon. What the fuck? And, and of course, she don't want to hear nothing of nothing wrong about her baby Radley, okay? Nothing bad about her. So, anyways, the other Natalie pops up, okay? And Renee shows, she's like, can you believe this? All the shit that she didn't. She didn't sit there and ask me to go to dinner with her after all the shit that went down. What the fuck are you thinking? When I was telling you to ring my doorbell, I was saying, why don't you, you could have had those chances to ring my doorbell to just come to my face and apologize, and it could have been done, but you didn't do that. <sighs> this broad. <laughs> I swear. And then... Natalie is um goes to tell them about the whole sea hack thing and Drita's like, Ange, listen to this. And then Nas is like, I don't want y'all to just think that I'm some person that comes and stir up drama and try and big ass likes too late. That's what I think. And they're sitting there looking at her like, Are you for real? Is you for real? Even Drita. And Big Ed just like, oh, Drita and jumped on the bandwagon. I don't want to hear no fucking more about Riley, okay? <laughs> I came here to go ahead and, and for your calendar part. I, so let me see some photos. And she walks off. And they like, dude, open your ears. I don't know, y'all. We're going to see what happened on next episode. And she, I don't know what the hell she did. She old ass. Why she got this special place in your heart? Okay, she can literally stab you in your face. <laughs> oh no, she didn't mean to. You know, she's a little clumsy with a knife. Anyway, so y'all like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Um, y'all one K subscribe give you away. Y'all know what that's about. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.